How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to go and do this mission, uh, Riverport, or I think it's contract technically. Um, yeah, it's originally on the list of things you had to do to unlock that Tatra Force but I've already got it now. But either way, obviously it's just a list of missions on the contract so it's one uh, I wouldn't mind getting done. So if I click on it, there's basically two uh, sort of power line pylon things on the uh, right edge of the map and then you've got two lots of metal beams, one's in like the factory in the top left, one's in the scrapyard. So I'm going to drive with both trucks, I'm going to split them up here, drive one up there just to go there. To be honest, I could drive both that way, I just, you know, fancied sort of splitting them up, doing a little bit of a, a different route for each one. Meet them all back up at the scrapyard though, drive uh, down along here and sort of, yeah, take both metal beams, drop one off there, and then zip over here and drop that off. And when you do this, you unlock uh, in the top right hand corner the port section, where I've unlocked the trailer store, doing uh, Don's right hand mission. I'll also unlock like, it'll, I'll now have access to cargo there, I believe I can get like bricks, cargo containers and metal beams. And then it'll also, once you finish this mission, it unlocks the mission called Sleep, the Sleeping King or something, which uh, you have to deliver one lot of metal beams, which you can now get from the new store area or whatever, from the um, port. And then yeah, the second half of that mission is to go and repair that Tatra Force that's in the scrapyard, and then I assume it'll just say it's your vehicle, you can recover it. As I said, it's a little bit... Um, it's not a terrible vehicle, it's just not amazing. I prefer the Phoenix, hence why right now I'm taking a, two Phoenixes. There's no point in me taking one of each because the Force is just going to be a slower version to me. I'm not going to gain anything for it. It's, I wouldn't say... I don't really know with the fuel, but I'll call it now. I don't think it's going to work out any better on fuel because the, the Phoenix is enough quicker that it'll just make up for any extra fuel it uses. A bit like, yeah, Dolphin versus John. I'd just rather put my foot down and I'll worry about fuel. <laughs> I've got time to worry about fuel because I made it to this other side of the map in like five minutes, not 50, so. Um, yeah, this is like, a, again, crossing that little river section. I've split them up now. As I said, I, I've got to get two lots of metal beams. In theory, I kind of don't like that the trailer store is over in that port. I'd much rather it was just, you know, in the sort of garage yard area like normal. Uh, I couldn't really be bothered driving all the way to the port. Well, I say all the way. <laughs> make it sound bad. It ain't that much of a long drive, but nonetheless, I still couldn't be arsed doing it. Um, yeah, I'm just going to carry one lot of metal beams on my head and stick one in the sideboard. And uh, yeah, like I said, on this truck, I've got the sideboard. On the other one, I've got the crane. Obviously, it's this new... Well, I don't know. I mean, they haven't specifically said it's like a medium crane. I just mean in the sense of how massive it is. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, it hogs more room on the back of your truck and it like it certainly takes more room than a small crane but I still think they're pretty useless and crap you'll see uh, later on when they're trying to pick up a metal beam they can barely do that so I don't really see the point of like it being an extra big fancy crane when it doesn't really bring anything extra to the table it looks cool looks like a nice crane and all the rest of it and uh, yeah obviously at the minute I'm just driving the truck here of I'm not able to put the metal beams in just yet, but I'll be on my way soon. With the other truck. The scrapyard section is a little bit iffy. It's not the end of the world, but, you know, it's one of them where it's like, I just cut over there fine, but I could just as easily caught myself on a bit of scrap that might even be an invisible hitbox, and then I basically get stopped dead. So it's a little bit of hit and miss, but I found a route that wasn't too bad, to be fair. And then, yeah, as I said, strictly speaking, it may have even been quicker to just take both trucks the route I just did, but split this one off once I'm at the road, like near the fuel station I've unlocked. But yeah, just for the sakes of like taking two different routes and going for a little drive around the map. I had a few possibilities. I could have tried cutting across all the little islands where you get like the upgradable diff for, I think it's, yeah, the force. Um, but... I don't know, it just wasn't really worth it. It's quite a fair chance of tipping while you're cutting across those little islands, kind of in the top right-ish of the map. This little route through here, to be honest, was quite nice. That little uh, river section I cut across to get from like that, the right-hand side of the map to the left, I quite like that a little bit. It's not too insane or anything. There's a few trees laying there and that, but they don't tend to catch you, really. You sort of drive over them more. This, again, this extra menu every time you attach a winch. Drive me mad. I keep like accidentally pressing an extra button and yeah, detaching the winch, have to go and redo it and all sorts. 
I hope they, uh, they get that sorted pretty quick. It's already too late now to the point where it's kind of becoming part of my habit. So by the time they remove it, <laughs> I'll just keep hitting an extra button now for another week. And it, yeah, one thing I really do like about this truck, the more and more I drive it, the high gear is pretty damn good. And as people have said in the comments, and I agree, like I mentioned it yesterday or the other day, oh yeah, sorry, I didn't do a video yesterday. I um, I just, to be honest, was messing around on the game and kind of didn't really get around to anything. The only thing I was going to say apologies for is I was supposed to post a message saying I'm going to skip <laughs> the video today and then I forgot to do that. Um, Yeah, the high gear though, it's bloody good. I, I think there should be a bit of footage later where... I believe I crashed into something anyway and stopped dead and it's like I can still use the high gear. But I hope they don't nerf it. It's, uh, yeah, makes quite a nice change. I'm trying to think, there was some vehicles back in the day that were really relaxed with the high gear. I'm trying to think which ones they were. I think the Tager used to be pretty decent for it, but... I'm sure they, I don't know... Is it just me? Didn't they nerf the Tager or do something and it just didn't quite feel... It's not that it's a bad truck by any stretch, it's just... I feel like it got a little bit of a nerf and it was sort of like, well, it's not the... It's not the Tager of old. If you watch, like, not that I'm suggesting to do it, but the uh, review I did on the Tager, that was back when it was like beast mode Tager and, yeah, it was eating the maps for breakfast. But it was enjoyable because, again, if I didn't want it to be that easy, I could just go and pick either another truck or remove some of the upgrades off the Tager if that's the specific truck I still wanted to drive. Those legs that stick out on the crane, I will say as well, they're a little bit of a pain. It's not the end of the world, but I, I did catch it on quite a few things tonight, to be honest. They've just obviously got a very sharp hitbox, so we, and again, because the hitboxes of things aren't necessarily 100% accurate you sometimes clip them on stuff it looks like you'd miss and that yeah I took a little whack there not too bad though that could have easily been you know like just took a 200 point hit <laughs> and that was my fault there. I was not even well, I was so busy concentrating on like slowly delicately driving over those concrete blocks I by the time I looked ahead and realized there's a little wall sticking out it was too late another thing I think that's cool that you sort of you'll notice it here and there with this truck. It's not just got rear steer, but it's like every axle steers. So the two rear axles obviously steer like in the opposite direction. And then the two front, so yeah, just, I don't know, it's a nice little detail. I notice in a minute after I put this metal beam on my head and I reverse, you'll probably be able to see it. A pretty good example of it. But this shows you, with the crane, I just... It looks all big and fancy and all the rest of it, but it just ain't that good. I'd say the uh, the KRS Bandit crane for me would still be the best small crane. Quite often better than the big crane, other than obviously it doesn't have the reach the big crane does. But right now I'm trying to lift my crane up in the air. You can, yeah, I don't, just it won't lift the metal beams high enough for me to even place them on the roof. When I fully stopped everything then and held it, I think it did lift for a bit, but you'll see later on it don't always do that. I think I just got slightly lucky there where it raised it high enough that I could kind of wedge it on my roof. Yeah, if you keep a little eye on the uh, tyres, you should be able to... I think this is now when I noticed it myself. Again, I knew it was rear steer, but I didn't realise sort of every axle turns. But yeah, I don't know, I thought that was a pretty cool little detail, I like that. Overall, the steering's pretty good on this truck. And yeah, I figured, well, like I said, it saves me going to get a trailer, doesn't it? <laughs> Sit it on my head, which I was a good one. And to its credit, this truck's pretty decent as well at not rolling. Certainly decent enough that just in this form, it doesn't make it a complete nightmare that's trying to tip every two seconds. It's still got enough resistance. I wouldn't want to do some serious off-road rallying and tipping at harsh angles with this on my roof with the crane kind of up in the air arched over the top of it as well, but yeah, it's uh, the truck's certainly decent enough that it's doable. See what I mean? Uh, maybe I clipped it, I don't know, but either way, not keen on those little crane legs that stick out.
they've done the same thing that I did in phase four, just stuff all over the yard to wiggle around. To be fair, it's not too bad there. Those concrete slabs I've damaged the suspension on are a bit meh. Like you just have to tiptoe over them, but it's not the end of the world. That little circuit thing as well, where I grabbed the metal beam from, there's like a little mini what name, sort of truck assault course around there. So I've had a few goes of it, it's not too bad. It's more the damage on that. I think you can only take 10 damage on the entire course, and obviously the nature of this game, you could whack your tyre and take 1 damage or 100, so there's a little bit of hit and, mass hit and miss sorry, in that sense, but other than that, it's not been a bad little competition. I've had 4 or 5 goes, took a few vehicles there. Don't think I've got any amazing times particularly. Stri I, do you know what? I can't even tell you if I've got a gold yet on it. I might have, but I, I can't remember. again, <laughs> clip that bloody crane leg on some sign and in fairness I'm being pretty lazy now, I'm just trying to find like the most direct route I can instead of skipping around, but to be fair it doesn't look like a whole lot going on in the way of like scrap in the way and you see when I jump down here I'm automatically leaning over to the right a bit there is other trucks that would tip by the time they're wearing metal beams like a hat and all the rest of it so uh, yeah overall like I say I think this truck's pretty solid and the force it's not terrible it's just slow and it feels like too much drama and faffing around but it's I mean it's not it's not going to tap out on the first little puddle it sees but yeah it's going to take its time I know that I'm just going to cut ahead I quickly moved that trailer, that curtain side trailer out of the way because I was originally planning on, again, trying to <laughs> just be lazy, drive straight forward and hopefully I can rally over the scrap, but they've obviously placed everything there specifically. You can see that cargo container next to it. You can't get through that way, they've made sure of it. This is, again, I'm trying to lift the metal beams. That noise you can hear is me just holding the please lift the metal beams up button. And it just won't lift it high enough that I can just slide them on my roof. It keeps stopping just before. And that's a fully retracted crane, so it's not even like I'm trying to do it at, you know, with full extension or anything. And again, I'm going to uh, cut ahead a little bit, because all I do now is literally drive forward. You'll see where I start to go got caught on some invisible rubbish there yeah crashed into an invisible wall that's what I mean it's not just the scrap you can see there is kind of an, an invisible wall going on there that it won't actually let you pass anyway um, so I'm just gonna go around this way you can't quite see it but just off to the right of the screen is the Tatra force in that it's in like enclosed in a little circle of rocks Somebody, uh, it must have been in the comments, was saying, I think other people had been saying they've had to try and get that Tatra Force out with a large crane and stuff. I'll be honest, I'm not too sure yet, but, well, tomorrow I'll be doing the live stream, so possibly I might do the uh, Sleeping King mission on the live stream, just because we can see. I think by now, in fact, it's probably a pretty good one to do, because now they've kind of just let us have the Tatra Force anyway, we don't really it's not as desperate to list those missions as like standalone missions and um, so I just got my first truck obviously out the scrapyard you've seen I already had another Phoenix a little bit further ahead just that I abandoned the other day when I was driving around so I just quickly reverse that out of the way I was tempted to pass the metal beams over the scrap I couldn't drive over to that orange uh, Phoenix with a crane I, I was just reversing quickly the only reason I didn't in the end was I was kind of curious to see how well this would climb over this little mud ramp bit coming up while it's got cargo on its head and all the rest of it. And again, this is a pretty sketchy... I thought it was going to go then, it was certainly thinking about it, but... Yeah, can't knock that, that's a bit of an awkward section, especially with the, uh, the setup on kind of how I'm doing it. But, strictly speaking, I'm, I'll admit, alright, I don't really know when it comes to the uh, the distribution of wearing metal beams on your head in a crane like that, but generally speaking, a truck is obviously weighted a hell of a lot lower because it just is. That's where all the, the metal and the good stuff is. The cab itself is, you know, weightless by comparison. It's fresh air and a steering wheel. 
So I'd kind of expect a a purpose-built off-roading kind of truck from Tatra to make it over that hill. But yeah, nonetheless, I'm glad they've balanced this truck that it is decent. And again, with the force, although it's slow, it probably wouldn't do terrible at that part either. So it's kind of like, yeah, they've not given us two complete, just useless things that don't mean anything. I think one of the biggest shames, I'd say, about this Phoenix, and I believe it's the same with the Force, so it doesn't really matter either way. Um, I can't have, obviously, like, the sideboard bed and a crane, but there's clearly more than enough room to fit a small crane, like just a normal one. Maybe it's some deal with Tatra, because they've got the actual brand name. I don't know, maybe that is a crane that Tatra make that they kind of sell with the trucks. I have no idea, but... Uh, yeah. I mean, strictly speaking, if they put the KRS Bandit, I, I don't know if the KRS Bandit's based off... Of, I, I'm, I'm sure it's based off a real truck. I don't know if it's called the Bandit, etc. in real life. But yeah, that could be like a brand name crane, and that's why they're not... You know, Tatra don't want a different brand's crane appearing on this or whatever. I don't know. But I mean, there's both the setups. You can have a fat overweight crane that is still just as useless as a little crane, or you can have a sideboard but I can't have both at the same time. See, even there as well, the truck at the back, I painted in that quite, I like that green colour. I just still, by, by a little bit, I prefer that sort of nice bright orange um, on my lead truck. But yeah, that green truck was tipping pretty, pretty far there, and it still didn't quite tip. I'm not 100% sure, but I think as you're driving this way up here, you can see the current of the water's obviously going the opposite way. I don't know if or how much that's holding me back. Not obviously right here, because I'm not really in the water, but... Once the current mechanics kick in on this game, they're pretty... pretty meaty. <laughs> they don't mess around. They don't have, like, some 1 to 10 scale of river current. It's just like, nothing, 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 bam! Tsunami. And as well, with this route I'm taking back, obviously I just had to cross like the river, now drive along this bank and all the rest of it. In theory, I could have gone back the way I, say, drove to the scrapyard with the first orange truck, but again, just for mixing it up and sort of, you know, cruising around the map. Seeing how the vehicles respond to all the different bits of terrain, I just chose to go this way, so... Yeah, I'm just mentioning it, strictly speaking, if you're going to do this mission, you don't have to copy the route I took. It's not the most efficient. It was, uh, yeah, just quite a nice opportunity to actually do a, a basically a giant lap of the map, really, without doubling back on myself. Three old pumpkins in that field. It'll be Halloween soon. It's pretty crazy when you think that it was, like, not far off this time last year that I was... Uh, I did the video talking about them ghost things and all that. Pretty uh, mad how quick it all flies by. I do like this time of year. I love this time of year. I like winter. I like summer, but it often gets too hot, and I like it at night anyway, so daytime is just an inconvenience to me, really. But autumn, We're just getting now this, like, nice crisp cold air at night but it's not really cold enough yet that you're starting to think oh I need to put a hoodie on or it's stick the heating on it's just it's nice and soon I've not done a pumpkin for a while I can't really be asked if I'm honest but like I said when we were kids burning leaves in them and we didn't quite realize that our mum was <laughs> practically having a breakdown on the phone and we're trying to set the garden on fire to be fair though it was a damn fine looking garden on October or sorry November the 1st it was not a leaf in sight. You would not have guessed it was autumn. And to be fair, three heavily torched pumpkins outside the back door is a bit of a giveaway. But apart from that, it was not a leaf in sight. So I stopped here. Obviously, I'm going to turn right. I have my reasons. I have no regrets. I could have gone now. I probably could have made it to the end, but needed to have me some goddamn horse time, didn't I? Look at him. Jumps over that ditch like ditch. Where we're going, we don't need ditches. Gets here and see, this is just the scale of goddamn professional. Fixes that Phoenix, fixes the other one, 12 points left. 
What a beast. He knows what he needs to bring. Whip out some juice. Still got his own fuel tank. Jobs are good and enough fuel. I gave the rear truck a bit of fuel as well, but because that's not the lead truck, it doesn't burn as much anyway, so. There we go. Feel better now. I've had a bit of loaf time. It was a good job I did, see? It's already wasting repair points. Got plenty to waste now. I could have gone to the effort. I could have fit the fat little juicy horse on me somewhere, I can guarantee it. <laughs> I've always got time and ways to fit a juicy little horse on me, but... Yeah, I just went for it. To be honest, the crane's been having enough trouble lifting metal beams, <laughs> so... It's going to try and fat shame my little loaf. I'm not having that. It's not too bad, but there is a little, just a couple of mile an hour, like, can you just, for the amount of revs and noise and all the rest of it, can you please just go a tiny bit faster? But it don't, doesn't feel that bad in this truck. And if I was doing, like, the road train situation with a force behind me, it'd be even slower, so. I'm not knocking it, but as I sort of when I was saying the other day, we've had, like, super mud, death mud, and now we've got sort of slick mud. I still feel like that's actually not a bad sort of way to describe it. I kind of feel like... I'm scrambling for grip more than I'm struggling to climb stuff and that. It's just, I need a little bit more grip. Yeah, rolled it there, thankfully. Uh, not only is the truck pretty alright to get back, but the... I don't know if it's specifically because the sideboard is a bit deeper or if I just got lucky there, but I appreciate that the metal beams just stayed in the bloody thing. As it should do, really, if it's theoretically been ratchet-strapped to death in there and all the rest of it. But yeah, I'm not complaining. I was like, yes. Hit pack cargo and I'm out of there. I did see as well in the comments, someone said, I think they sort of borrowed, so to speak, the, uh, the look of this truck from, I think it was Daft, they said, which makes a lot of sense, because to be honest, this truck does look pretty familiar to me, and obviously it's a cab over sort of design anyway, which we've got over here pretty much excluded. If you see an American truck, it's like a rare, rare, rare exception. Um, it's probably just from a company that's wealthy enough that they like an, the look of an American truck and they've imported one or whatever just to have an American truck. It is a bit of an eye-catcher over here. Um, yeah, but when they said it's been borrowed from a DAF or whatever, that makes a lot of sense because that's what, we have DAFs over here, uh, MAN, Scania, Volvo. But like I said, pretty much exclusively just in the cab over but yeah this thing does like the bottom lights and that the shape of it all looks very familiar so that makes a lot of sense I wonder what the deal is with that thing because this is a Tatra and I assume they've done some kind of deal with Tatra if they're using the official name so does that like in real life I don't know is Tatra using DAF's cab design which may well be the case in this day and age it's all mixed and matched you know? you've got like Audi that owns Lamborghini and you get bits off a Lamborghini that appear on an Audi and the new Lamborghini will have Audi, uh, Audi wing mirror or just, well not wing mirror to be fair, but you know what I mean. Some kind of button on the dash that'll be straight out of an Audi. Yeah, now, stuck, you know what. A tree stump, and to be honest, just out of principle, what a dick move. Like, the thing was hidden pretty well. I'm inches from the destination and it just I get stuck on a tree stump for no apparent reason there's no need for it it doesn't increase the difficulty it just whoever keeps adding these tree stumps I can only hope that one day when you're driving home you'll get home and you'll catch your wife in bed with a tree stump and we're all gonna laugh because that's karma's way of saying fuck you and the tree stump you rode in on but anyway <laughs> we got it we got out of that in the end but I'm not happy about it. Uh, yeah, we made the destination, we dropped our metal beams off, now I've got this thing. Uh, just at this point, I don't particularly know why, I just set off in the orange one. Didn't let go of the throttle and that's that, so we kind of split the road train up. I was going to over this section anyway, because I didn't think for the life of me, even if the first truck made it, that it was going to... Yeah, this thing was going to make it behind me. And a bit of good, bit of bad, I mean I rolled, but it's a potentially rollable place, so I'm not knocking it for that, and I like that the truck kept the engine running and I could do that. Happy days. Yeah, 
actually lifted the metal beam up here. That's what I mean. Every now and then you get lucky and it'll just lift it, but I don't know why 90% of the time it doesn't, because, again, why would you even set the crane strength like that? I mean, it's just a game. Just let me lift whatever it is the crane is made to lift. Just set the crane strength to fucking insane. So it doesn't matter if I lift an entire another truck with it. Because to be honest, I'm not going to be able to lift another truck anyway because my truck will tip before it lets me lift an entire other truck. But, you know, just let me do that anyway. Like, I don't need my crane strength to be the limiting factor. See now, literally, I'm trying to lift this metal beam up in the air. I can't lift it high enough to clear my own tyres. And I was just sort of putting it there. I know I'm kind of pushing it down uh, on my rear wheels a little bit, but just to generally keep the weight flopping around a bit lower. And again, because those extra buttons I accidentally cancelled. So for me personally, the mission was going pretty bloody well all the way until I hit that tree stump in the orange truck. And then, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I, my levels of enthusiasm started to drop off quite quickly. Because long story short, you're going to keep fucking around with tree stumps. I'm just going to get bored and be like, now, nah, pop a film on. I, like, at what point, SnowRunner devs? It's been a year and a half of putting stupid tree stumps everywhere that we can't do anything about. We can't remove them that's it it's like it's just boring now think of something else to get me stuck on so again that's why I like this truck though sticking in high gear it was rallying pretty well through there once you hit the boggy stuff can't really uh, complain too much to be fair it would have let me attempt it in high gear, it wouldn't have been beneficial, I would have probably bled most of the power and wheel spin and it's better to go low range diffs on, but I like that it's my choice now, <laughs> the game is not going to go, oh, stolen, now you have to go in low gear, it's like, yeah, if I just want to be stubborn and watch some mud flick around all over the place, I'll keep it pinned in high. So I think off to the right was where I just went with the orange truck. Where is it? Is it this bit coming up? There was somewhere where it just feels like, oh yeah, it's just after this. It's pulling my steering to the right and I don't know, I kept feeling like I was steering out of it, but it just it kept doing it to me quite a lot. I think it's about here. You can't really tell, but I was turning left the entire time there. I reversed just in case I hit a tree stump I couldn't really see. I didn't want to get it stuck on the axles again. And then now... Like, see how it quite violently just swung over to the right? I didn't turn at all there. I'm not sure if it's just the weight and stuff made me fling over that way or what, but... I remember it. I took note of it. Just remember to apply more left. When you're going down there, whatever that trailer is I hit, I can't ram it out of the way. Which is highly disappointing. I mean, fair enough, I can't ram that digger out of the way. I'll accept. That would just go through my cab window and kill me. But that little trailer, slap that out of the way for fun. It'd be quite cool if they added one of those diggers by now. I don't, to be fair, it would be cool, but then when I say that, it's like, actually, the practicality of supplying the buttons and everything for me to use, I don't know. It'd probably end up a little bit like the forklift. It was a nice idea, and I don't knock them for trying, but just the actual mechanics of it, it's just more practical to use a crane. I think we all had a go and had a little bit of fun in the forklift, but other than the uh, the stubborn ones, <laughs> which don't get me wrong, I fully respect. Oh, I bet most people have just gone back to the crane now. There will be a few diehards that are like, nope, <laughs> I'm sticking to the forklift, even though it's horrifically awkward. And again, like, Jesus Christ, game. Like, what a crap way of balancing this mission it's a nice mission the entire way and then you just surround each box with immovable trees and tree stumps like really in real life if i was driving around and like my job in the local area was driving a truck around and i got stuck on more than one tree stump ever i would track down the local tree stump man and politely explain to him if i ever get stuck on one more i will shove that tree stump so far up his ass he'll get some free root canal work like what kind of menace would do that 
I can't remember if I said it before, but for some random reason when we went on a school trip years ago, it was in Northumberland, not far off the Scottish border, um, they took us to this, the biggest tree farm in the UK or whatever, it was like 63,000 hectares or whatever they said, and we watched some pretty cool machinery, to be fair, ripping trees out of the ground and doing all what they do, logging. Um, yeah, one of these machines would like chainsaw it off at the bottom, fling it through this little grabby thing that would automatically whip all the branches off, chop it up into sections and he's off to the next thing. The thing looked like monster truck tyres that was an eight wheel articulated mad thing. But anyway, some other guy went round with another truck thing that had a big arm on it and at the end of it was like, I don't know, a giant wheel sort of grinding thing that you just kind of shove into the tree stumps in the floor as it chewed them and ground them up and yeah that was his job to go around removing tree stumps so that the guy who's going around collecting trees doesn't get stuck on tree stumps and it was like that guy has an important job to stop the other guy from getting out of his cabin killing him so yeah you could see by the time I got the uh, the green one that's the thing with the tree stumps it it lets it go past your first axle every bloody time and then it gets stuck between your first and second axle and because you can only like reverse or go forward like a foot you're gonna have to do a million point turn you just there's no good way of getting off tree stump you have to do weird stuff to start putting the winch tipping your truck over near enough tipping it over and all sorts <laughs> had to ram a tree out of the way here yeah? <laughs> you can tell by this point in case not that it needs explaining, but yeah, patience level's kind of running low at the minute. I'm just like, fuck this, ram everything. <laughs> I'm getting through, and I'm delivering some goddamn beams. That's enough tree stump shenanigans for one day. So now, obviously, at this point, I can't move my green truck forward because I'm stuck on a tree stump. And... Oh, amazing crane of amazing cranes. Yep. <laughs> can't lift the metal beams high enough, so I can't even rest it on the back. That is now... It all See, it thought about it. I can't lift that high enough now to just rest it on the back of that sideboard. So, I just edited it out, but I believe I did reverse the orange truck back a bit. I tried to drive my green truck as far forward as I could. Actually, I was like, oh, cool. But I already knew that like, impossible to pack. Bet money on it. Yep. <laughs> Because of course it is. I remember I did have a like a few inches spare. So I That's what I said. Um, so I could drive the truck forward and just kind of nudge those metal beams. Now I'm trying to get the crane out of the way so it doesn't still say impossible to pack or something's in the way or whatever. Get it packed, deliver it. Job's good. There's only about four or five grand. Again, apart from the whole tree stump thing, I wouldn't be too bothered with that, but the fact that they tried to screw me over with tree stumps, they should at least double that money for the sheer audacity and inconvenience of it. Scared the shit out of a pigeon, though, so take what I can get. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. That's the mission done. Uh, all I'll just show you quickly is it's now unlocked. Like, there is now a cargo area in the port that I didn't have a minute ago. Thankfully I already had a force sat here from the other day when I did the Dom's right hand, so I can just drive that forward quickly and check out what it's uh, what it's got. So yeah, but, uh, bricks, cargo container and metal beams, and I believe all of them are unlimited, so you, you know, don't have to uh, treat them carefully. And then yeah, it also unlock that, Sleeping King, which is now the mission that will let me unlock the force. Attach what there it is, you can see like in the rewards section it says attach force. The first bit is to deliver metal beams to that little yellow square light near where I am now. That'll be easy. Um, that's stage one of the mission so it won't even let me at the minute look at the attach of force to see how many points etc I need to fix it. I'll have to deliver that metal beam first. Which again I'll probably do in tomorrow's live stream among other things but yeah. that's uh, So that's this mission done. Like I said that's one step closer and I'll be, uh, I'll be bagging that thing pretty soon. At least now I've got the trailer store. When I grab a metal beams from the port, I'll also bring a maintenance trailer with me and then between, I throw a loaf in. Jobs are good. Un. And uh, yeah, that is about it. I just wanted to show you this quickly because I wanted to say apologies. Like, when I showed this the other day, I didn't realise, so thanks to the people who let me know, you can pack the vehicle so you don't see the little sort of tyre blocks 
a pitter, but I can pack it. So when I did it the other day and I lifted it, I had no idea you could click pack. So I drove forward and the truck just kind of dribbled off and that was it. It's actually a pretty clever idea to just cut out all the faff of trying to move the lengths and widths of like that little metal squares like somebody did with the mods. Um, yeah, I respect it how someone went to all the detail with the mods. I just mean this is like the lazy way around it just to click pack and I kind of don't blame them. Funnily enough, you can tell why a lot of the weight's in the front of the force. Yeah, that thing could do with a goddamn horse or a vehicle on its head. That'll uh, keep the weight balance pretty nicely. But yeah, that's about it for today though. So uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Thanks for my Patreon members. Get yourself a loaf, because why wouldn't you? Get yourself a phoenix out of both of these. And yeah, there we go. <laughs> I tipped it off. But yeah, I'll be back soon.